People like Randy, if you watch some of his videos, and luckily I don't spend a lot of time on that stuff. You're out of line. First of all, I got to call BS on some of Ben's comments here. Um, hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't speak out of one side of your mouth. Oh, here we go. This is all your opinion. When you're saying things are opinion. What? I can't even relate to you. Is everything an opinion? If everything is an opinion, then what is this? That's a man. Yep. That's the woman. <laughs> What's your opinion? I don't mean to sound disrespectful, but I disagree with a lot of their findings. I have not seen it in my own personal reality like that. My reality is different than your reality. You're disagreeing with people with scientific data that it's their profession to study these fisheries. Scientific data that may prove invaluable in the future. Dude, I've been studying fish for 50 years. Impressive. Oh, what is going on? Like, what is going on? Ben Milliken and Randy Blockett finally meet face to face in a two hour duel on a podcast called Bass After Dark. They have a two man panel and one expert. Milliken reacts to Randy's subscriber comments. Let's go. Uh, let me let me read you a, uh, a text here I got from one of my subscribers that like points it out perfectly what I'm saying here. Randy isn't happy about Milliken's attacks. The the podcast that you did on Mercer, those podcasts using the uh, using the thumbnails with tears in my eyes. After I've never said I used the thumbnail man, two times. I have never seen I've one, I've never said one on single video. word bad about you. You're the one that started this. Okay. You are, you are but what am I? No, you are but what am I? It gets a little heated at times. Does Randy have a point regarding tradition? What about the A rig? They banned it because they said in keeping with the, the tradition that Bassmaster holds deer of one rod, one lure, we've decided to, you know, not allow this. It's a tradition. Tradition. Randy Blockett came prepared with personal experience and subscriber support. Milliken came with numbers and statistics. Which one wins? Now, let's hear from the expert. Listen closely or you just might miss it. Based on the gigabaud rate or the, the, the physical layer. What the hell did he say? I have no idea. It takes that in and essentially takes this massive data stream into the unit and then the receiver. Uh, uh, cowabunga, swing, yada, yada, yada. I'm so confused. Hopefully you caught that. It was very important. Milliken has info from a 33 year study. Really? What'd they say? Quite simply told me that there was no statistical data since forward facing sonar has been released that there was any positive or negative impacts of forward facing sonar on the fisheries population, both the quantity and the size of fish. Wow, I never would have thought of that. This is all getting way out of hand. There has got to be some type of a benchmark in our sport as far as where we maintain that tradition a lot of people don't understand that aesthetic point of view i get it i mean it's, a lot of my supporters do i got a ton of people that are on my side but there's other people out there that, that they don't that doesn't click with them you just don't get it do you fishing traditionally has all has been about the unknown once you take the unknown out of fishing i've harped on this in my videos you diminish so much of what fishing is now this is the real question. Ben, answer me this. What is wrong with the world of tournament fishing that you have a benchmark of 2D sonar and GPS and that's what you have? Randy, that's not fun. And I've got some statistical data. I'm not just gonna simply go off and try to act like uh, I just read through my, my comments. Do you know Milliken's background? On my actual analytics, and a lot of people don't know my background, but I actually have a degree in environmental studies. Um, I spent a lot of time and studying the scientific method. Oh my God. He's a genius. I am impressed. You know, it's in its infancy right now. So the things that I'm, I'm obviously concerned about it right now, but I'm more concerned about what it's going to look like 10 years from now. The future is scary. Um, before I make any type of claims, it's based on data, uh, not just opinions. But um, where I'm going with that is that there isn't many more things we can do to make this technology better. Oh yes, we can, and we are. Uh, I mean, even even if we had some type of means that said what species each fish was on the screen. Tell me more. That doesn't really help. If we could lock onto a fish and follow it around. Oh no, that, that's cool. That doesn't help. I can do that with my foot now anyways. One foot, two foot, one foot, one foot, two foot, one. With the troll motor pedal, um, so. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there's somewhere it can go. Is 
everything really being one with live imaging or does everyone have it and mention it due to sponsors? If it's not that big of a deal, why has there been a complete domination the last two years? If there's not that, if it's not that much difference in 2D sonar, then, then why has it just become everybody's crutch that's having success on the circuit out there? Good question. Something that gets thrown around a lot is this idea that someone is a scoper. Someone's a live scoper. What did you call me? That's something that gets thrown around from people that don't actually understand why people are winning tournaments and how they're catching fish. They're fighting words and you know it. Is catching fish using forward-facing sonar as easy as it seems? They get the idea that you put the trolling motor in the water and you're bound to just go out in the middle of the lake and catch a big enough bag to win the tournament or to get a high place in the tournament. Where in reality, um, myself and the other anglers that have had success, you know, that, that Mr. Mr. Randy called out in his recent video, none of the anglers in the top 10 would have qualified, including myself, without being scopers. Man, that really makes me mad. JT Tompkins fishes like 340 days a year. He literally drives all across the country fishing every single day. If you go back and you look at the tournament results, Bassmaster, any, every level of MLF, BFLs, Toyota Series, Bass Pro Tours, how many tournament reports have you seen? If it wasn't from our forward-facing sonar, I'd have never won this tournament. I caught every fish looking at it. Hmm, I can see how that might seem a little personal. Randy, you wouldn't have a job right now. You wouldn't be making money if technology didn't advance. You're not posting your videos on a damn 1992 <laughs> IBM computer. You're posting them on state-of-the-art technology. More high-tech than kangaroos. Do you think fishing has become too expensive? Let's get into the whole financial disparity that, that exists with it. That, that's one nobody talks about on the tournament realm financial discrimination and the financial elitism that goes along with that technology has a huge impact. Costs have definitely increased. Why can't they allow live scope to be used in practice? It's not allowed to be used in the tournament. But my title sponsor, the guy that owns the company, he's he's been a he's got two rangers. He's been fishing forever for 40 years. We fish together a lot and he can't stand live scope. I mean he just absolutely hates it. One person. And Bottom line. It appears to be facts versus feelings, which is right and which is wrong. This is definitely an interesting conversation that is not going to end anytime soon. Who knows, the next advancement that comes out might have people wishing that forward-facing sonar was all they had to worry about. Be sure to watch the full debate on Bass After Dark. The link is in the description. If you like this video, I'm sure you will like this next one.